So we're going to start out with an example with a conversion lens. For this example, the focal length is going to be 2.0 centimeters. The object distance is going to be 5.0 centimeters. The object height is going to be 1.5 centimeters. We're going to look for all the normal things, the image distance, the magnification, and the three image characteristics. Converging lens. Now, we are actually going to start with the ray diagram. Here is our converging lens. And the first thing we're going to do, which is slightly different, the majority of what we do is the same for lenses versus mirrors. But the first thing we do with every lens is we draw a line that bifurcates the lens. We are going to cut the lens in two, essentially, and we're just going to draw a vertical line that goes right down the middle of this lens like this. Hence, bifurcating the lens, cutting it in two. That was terrible. I'm going to do the next one down. Somehow I missed the middle. Brilliant. Consider getting closer. Yeah, closer. All right, so that's why we have to. All right, so here we go. The object. We need to draw the object five centimeters from the center of the lens. So we draw a dot five centimeters from the center of the lens right here. And we're going to draw an object which is 1.5 centimeters in height. Hence, it looks like this. Now, we have our three rays, and two of them are almost identical to what we did before, and one of them is just a hair different. So we'll just start with the parallel ray. The incident ray of the parallel ray, mega, goes in what direction? The incident ray of the parallel ray. I agree it goes to the right, but I need more specifics. Oh, parallel to the principal axis. Parallel to the principal axis. So it's the same. We draw the incident ray of the parallel ray goes towards the lens and parallel to the principal axis. So we go all the way to the line that we wrote that bifurcated the lens. And the ref refracting ray, or refracted ray, of the parallel ray goes in what direction, Stuart? Through the, focal point. through the focal point. Now, remember, the light goes through the lens, so it's going to go through the focal point, which is right here. So, it's going to, we're going to draw our, our uh, refracted ray of the parallel ray through the focal point. And those are the two, the incident and the refracted rays for the parallel ray. Now, I do want to talk for a moment about what happened right here. Inside the lens, when the light first goes into the lens, it's refracted. When the light leaves the lens, it is refracted. It actually doesn't do what, we, what we've indicated right here. It doesn't go straight and then run into something and then turn. It actually is going to be refracted all the way through here. So what we've drawn inside the lens is not a good representation of what's going on, but it gives us a good representation of what's going on outside the lens, unfortunately. It's much easier to draw it this way than to draw it refracted when it goes into and refracting when it goes out of the lens. So this is the way we draw it, simply because it's much, much easier. Now, the focal ray is the next one. The incident ray of the focal ray, Mahesh, goes where? Uh, it goes from the focal point. Through the focal point. Now, this, while it's called a converging lens, it is also called a biconvex lens because it has two different curves. Both are convex curves. So it actually has two different focal points, one on this side, the other over here. So we actually go, we switch focal points, and we go through the focal point that is on the same side as the object. And we draw our incident ray of our focal ray through that focal point. The refracted ray of the focal ray goes where? Flip. The second, the refracted ray of the focal ray. How do we draw that? Parallel to the axis. Parallel to the axis. What's the what is the axis called? Bianca. Uh, the 
the principal axis. So we draw it parallel to the principal axis, which is going to be like this. So we've now drawn all the rays for the parallel and the focal ray. Now we need to draw the chief ray. Remind me, how do we draw the chief ray for a mirror? Uh, Khan? Oh, okay. Both of them are incident and the reflected go through R. Go through the radius of curvature. Both the incident and reflect reflected rays go through the radius of curvature, which makes it the only ray that does what or doesn't do what? Hey. Uh, it actually does get reflected, but it gets reflected directly over the same ray, the same path. So it's undeflected, right? So a chief ray is also an undeflected ray, it continues along a straight path. And we can't do that through a radius of curvature, it's not going to work. So the place that the chief ray goes in order to be an undeflected ray is right through the very middle of the lens, right where the principal axis and this line we've drawn that bifurcates the lens intersect. So the chief ray, because it does not uh, diverge at all, goes straight through the lens, straight through the middle of the lens right there. And you can see we've now drawn our chief ray, and you can see exactly where our image is. So we can now draw our image, our dotted line, with our arrowhead. That is the location of our image. So that is the ray diagram. We now know the three image characteristics of our image. Please give me all three. Xander? You can see in the gray diagram it's reduced virtual and virtual. Now we're going to go through and do the math so that we can figure out the image distance and the magnification and confirm our three image characteristics. This, that which I'm about to do is highly redundant. We've actually already done this twice with mirrors. It's, the letters are all the same, it's, it, all the terms are the same, so I'm just gonna walk through it pretty quickly here. One over the object distance plus one over the image distance equals one over the focal length. We're solving for the image distance, one over the image distance equals one over the focal length minus one over the object distance, just subtracting one over the object distance from both sides. Taking the inverse of both sides, we get the image distance is equal to one over the focal length minus one over the object distance, the inverse of that whole thing. Therefore, we get that the image distance is equal to 1 over the focal length, which was 2, minus 1 over the object distance, which was 5, both in centimeters, to the negative 1 power. What is the image distance, please? Uh, Point three repeating with sig figs, 3.3 centimeters. So if you measure, you can see it is approximately 3.3 uh, centimeters. Yeah, about 3.3. I get about 3.4, but 3.3 centimeters from the middle of the lens. This confirms one of our image characteristics. Which one, please, Laura? Um, well, when you real. Ah, why is it real? Because it's opposite of the mirror. Okay, I agree with that. It's opposite of the mirror, but we're looking at the ray diagram. What tells us that it's real and not virtual? I agree with that, and that's a good thing to, to realize. Blackers. Um, well, it comes out on the other, the opposite side of the object, so. I, I understand that, but I that that is what we did up here. But I, I want to understand why it is that that is the real side. Come. Um, I, again, I agree with that, but I'm looking for something from the ray diagram that tells us specifically that this is going to be a real... The rays all the rays intersect. That makes it a real image. So because all the rays intersect over here, it's a real image. Agree, because it's on the opposite side of the converging ledge, because Q is greater than zero, because the image distance is greater than zero. Those are all correct. But I just want to make sure we realize that a real image can be focused on a screen because all of the... Uh, Refracted rays intersect, so this is a real image. Good. You can see why we confirm things sometimes. We can figure out the magnification too. Magnification is equal to negative Q, the image distance, over the object distance. Again, we've done this with lenses, so I'm just going to go through it pretty quickly. So the negative of the image distance, which was 3.3, repeating divided by the object distance, which was 5, 
the, therefore the magnification is equal to? Please. Uh, negative 0 0.6 repeating, so negative 0 0.67. Tyler, this confirms two of our image characteristics. Which two and why? Um, there is, uh, uh, because? Um, it's less than zero. What is it that's less than zero? Uh, the magnification. Good. And that it's inverted. Because? Mag magnification is less than? Yeah. No, it's not. Uh, what well, we got two of them the same there, so it's not quite correct. Um, it would be because? because the absolute value of the magnification is less than one. It is inverted because the magnification is less than zero. Great. That is a converging lens. 